Uh, I really appreciate having the opportunity to talk to you about data lineage today. Um, before I get started, I want to let you know that um, it says on the agenda that I work for Datakin, but I actually work for Astronomer because Astronomer and Datakin have joined forces a few months ago. And so I'm now working at Astronomer. Uh, and I wanted to let everybody know that's why it's different on the agenda. And that's the last you're going to hear about companies in this talk. Uh, everything from here on out is nothing to do with companies or products. But I would like to remind everybody that the 2022 Airflow User Survey uh, has been open now since, I think, last Friday. And it's open until Friday, June 3rd. Uh, this is a really important user survey. It is so important for the community to understand what people care about. And it really helps everybody focus on, on what they want to work on next. So that's the URL, uh, bit.ly slash Airflow Survey 22. Um, please take a minute and, and fill out the survey. We, we'd all really appreciate it. Um, these are my opinions. So um, I, I work for Astronomer, but these are my opinions, and I don't speak for anybody else. Uh, I, I think that my employer agrees with what I'm about to say, but I didn't actually ask. Uh, I'm just pretty confident that they do. But these are still my opinions, my opinions about the world and uh, my opinions about the world of data. To start off, I want to talk about what creates the need for data lineage. Uh, what happened in the world that makes this important now where it wasn't so important before? And I'll start with this. Um, if you haven't seen this before, this is the MAD landscape, the Machine Learning, Artificial Intelligence, and Data landscape for, uh, I think this is 2021 for last year. We've all seen these landscapes before. It's like, this is your industry. You are here. You're like these five pixels. And it just shows how much the data industry has exploded. Uh, you know, it recently, it's it's kind of insane how many companies, how many different types of areas there are now, way more than there have been before. So there's been a gigantic explosion in tools that we use for managing data pipelines. But that's not the only thing that's changed. A few other things have changed. First, there's been elastic cloud infrastructure available. You don't need to buy a server to deploy software today. 10, 15 years ago, maybe you used to. Now, of course, you don't. It also means that individuals in business units can expense cloud infrastructure, and they don't have to go through a process where they get approval to spend. At the same time, a lot of the pipeline components that are available today uh, are available using you know, monthly billing and SaaS models. And so all kinds of pipeline components are just easy to reach out and grab and use. And open source platforms have become way more mature than they ever have been in the past, particularly Apache Airflow, Apache Spark, many others. And what this has done is it's created a self-service data culture. This isn't in every organization. If you work for a bank, you might not be seeing this. But if you work for a tech company, you're definitely seeing this. It's, you know, it, it's not so much top down. It's outside in is how data is being dealt with today. And the defining dilemma has changed a little bit. It used to be, what kind of pipeline should I build? And how do I go about building it? How would I design this and that? And how would I string all of these things together? And now the defining dilemma is how many pipelines are currently running? Uh, how, how can I learn about all these pipelines and how can I know what's going on inside these pipelines? How can I support their development? How can I make sure they're mature? This has become the defining dilemma. In short, it's about building a healthy data ecosystem. It's not about building a pipeline anymore. It's about building an ecosystem where people in different teams can work together. They can produce and consume data sets. They can cross organizational boundaries. And all of these areas where conflict can be created are managed, managed with platforms, managed with standards. Because after all, ecosystems form around shared understanding. If I just reach it, random things on my desk, it's a screwdriver, right? It's a Phillips screwdriver. We've all agreed that this is the shape of the tip of the screwdriver. And we've all agreed that the tip of the screw should be a corresponding shape. And therefore, there are lots of tools available to work with this, this hardware. The same thing happens with everything else I could reach for. Camera lens, there are standards on those as well. And with data, it's the same. We need to have shared understanding of data sets in order to build the standards that are required for an ecosystem. And this shared understanding is, you know, what's the data source? What's the schema? Who owns this data set and how often is it updated? Uh, who uses it and when does it change? These are the basics that we need to understand about all the data that's going through our system in order to truly build a scalable and robust ecosystem around data within our organizations. So that's the background behind data lineage. We need this information about data in order to, in order to run really amazing pipelines and keep data where it needs to be for our businesses to make our decisions. So that's the first, 
first part of the story. What is data lineage? Here we are. We're at the meat of the sandwich now. What is data lineage? Well, data lineage is the set of complex relationships that exist between data sets and jobs in a pipeline. So as you have various pipelines and various tools and various data sets, lineage is the collection of complex relationships. It's the producers and consumers of every data set and the inputs and outputs of every job. That's not so difficult, right? Like that's pretty easy. Just know everything about your data sets. Simple, right? The concept of data lineage is not difficult. It's a very simple concept. What's difficult is how you implement it. Before I get into how you implement it, let's spend a bit of time talking about why we need data lineage in order to succeed. Like how does this, how does this benefit us? Because it does take a little bit of work to establish. Well, I would start with this. This is the most traditional use case for lineage. If your job involves at some point, somebody asking you, hey, did that data set ever leave our walls? Or did we ever leak this data into this organization? If, you, if your job involves answering questions like that about what happened to data, and if the answers are not good, are you in trouble? <laughs> that would be a really good case for data lineage. Understanding what happened to the data, its entire journey from where it was created or where it entered your organization all the way through to all the corners that it, that it seeped into. If you need to understand what happened to data, you need data lineage. This is probably the uh, most solid use case, the most, certainly the most mature use case. If you look at the data lineage vendors that exist in the marketplace today, most of them are chasing this use case. It's the use case of allowing people to sleep at night, knowing that they're, they're truly caring for the data the way they already agreed that they would. So compliance is a huge one. I think also optimizing data operations is a really big area of, of potential for data lineage. It's kind of like, a, uh, like an assembly line, right? It's like having you know, a robotic assembly line in some ways, because if you have a pipeline that understands the extent of its actions, then it can take smarter actions. For example, if you have a job that failed and you know that that failed job is no longer uh, emitting the right data to its downstream jobs, um, you may not be able to tell from looking at the downstream jobs that there's any problem, but you can certainly tell by looking at the upstream job and the data lineage. A smart pipeline could automatically backfill downstream jobs once the upstream job has been addressed, the issue in the upstream job has been addressed. There are a whole bunch of things that you can do to make a pipeline smarter, if only it knows exactly what it's doing and where it got all the data that it's working with. Huge opportunity here. I think that another really huge area of opportunity is just in establishing context and language. When you are planning with your colleagues, uh, you know, uh, planning a new application, being able to speak very directly about, no, we'll pull this data set from here and we know that it came from there and we'll combine it with this data set. You can use data lineage to have a conversation about this with colleagues when you're planning uh, new applications when you're trying to, you know, troubleshoot outages, that sort of thing. It establishes a context for working with data and working with your colleagues. But really, this is one of these things that I, I believe data lineage has the potential to augment every use case in the entire data world. Uh, you know, dependency tracing, clearly, root cause identification. If you, if you see a list of a thousand jobs you know, and half of them have failed, wouldn't it be nice to know, like in a graph where it started, which where the explosion started and which direction it went in, as opposed to just seeing a list? Root cause identification is a really great use case for data lineage. I issue prioritization, impact mapping, precision backfills. These are all areas where there's a lot of potential for data lineage. However, it's not easy. Um, these are a set of non-malicious lies that vendors tell about lineage. I've actually said real time before in my role as a lineage vendor, it was an attempt to explain something, but it's not really true. It, lineage is also, if, if you, anybody tells you that lineage is fully automated or end to end, or that you'll get 360 degree visibility, these are challenging promises to make. 
And since we're so early in the lineage industry, keep an eye out for these. These are good indicators that that something's maybe not as comprehensive as it as it might suggest. And the reason is because this is a really hard problem. This isn't easy figuring out how to trace and collect all this data lineage. So how do we go about doing it? What why is it that these are all lies? <laughs> so as an example, um, I think that EXIF has the right idea. EXIF is, what does it stand for? Extended, into, I, I don't know. It's, it's the metadata that attaches to a photo when you take it from a camera. And so you can, you can look at the resulting photo and try to figure out when the photo was taken and where the photo was taken strictly by what's in the photo. But that is a fool's errand. It's possible, but it's not ideal. It's much better if you are able to capture the metadata and store the metadata instead of trying to derive it. So that's the right approach with data lineage. Instead of looking at the data and trying to intuit what happened, clearly the right way to do it is to discreetly, is to directly and explicitly collect metadata about lineage. So there we go. Just collect all the metadata, right? Collect it all. But where do you get it from? That's the challenge, because we have this, this giant expansive data stack now. So how do you collect metadata from the movement of data across all of these different tools? Well, there are a couple of approaches. Um, there's not a one size fits all approach to observing and collecting lineage that I'm aware of. Uh, I know of a few different approaches that can be combined. The first one is to observe the pipeline. So this is essentially integrating with your orchestration system like Spark or DBT or Apache Airflow and asking it, what did you touch? Very simple asking Airflow, hey, what'd you do? And Airflow says, I did all of these things. So you watch the jobs as they run, you integrate with the orchestration system, you observe the way that the jobs affect data, and then you report all that information back to a data lineage repository. That's one way of doing it. The advantages are that it's fairly automated. There we go, there's that, that scary word automated. This is pretty much automated. However, it only knows what the pipeline itself is doing. So if somebody's got an Excel spreadsheet with a, you know, like a, a like a snowflake connector or something, and they're doing just weird out of band stuff. This would not see that. So it sees everything that goes through the pipeline, doesn't see anything else. The next approach would be to process query and activity logs. So this is taking that that previous one and sort of flipping it around. Instead of asking the orchestration system, "What did you touch?" This is asking the warehouse, "What touched you?" So this is going to a system like Snowflake or BigQuery, grabbing the query logs and then processing them and figuring out, like parsing all the SQL and figuring out from that what the lineage was, looking at actually the queries that actually ran, and then you report that to a data lineage repository. This is advantageous because this will allow you to get visibility over everything that happens in your warehouse, but it doesn't show you anything that happens outside of your warehouse. So this is part of the solution, but not the entire solution. The third approach I'm aware of is source code analysis. So this is where you integrate with like GitHub, for example, or uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever your source code repository is, and you crawl through the source code, you look for queries and other things that manipulate data, and you parse them for lineage, and then you report that back to a data lineage repository. And this is advantageous because you can get a good understanding of everything that your known application is likely to do. Uh, it's disadvantageous because you don't actually know that those queries actually ran. You don't know when they ran. You don't know how long they took. There's a lot that you don't know because you're not studying something that happened. You're studying something that's possible. So this is also a perfectly valid approach for gathering data lineage. I think that the reality is this is a patchwork. You need to have a lot of different approaches to gathering data lineage. If, if your goal is complete lineage coverage, you need to be prepared to apply or, 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 or deploy several tactics for gathering that information and then combine all of them to get that view of the world that you need. I guess um, I've heard people say this notion that you can turn lineage on in a pipeline, in a warehouse, that it's just a, a switch that you flip. And it's not. It is something you achieve. Lineage is something that you achieve. And 100% lineage coverage is an ideal goal that you want to achieve. Just like observability, um, you, you, you aren't able to observe 100% of what goes on inside your data center, not, not guaranteed. 
you attempt to achieve 100% observability. The same is true for lineage. So the, the solution, if you take a, a giant step back and you look at the industry, the solution has something to do with this fable that I like to tell you about community. And if you've seen uh, Julian talk about open lineage, you've heard this fable before. And it's the fable of the stone soup. The fable goes like this. Uh, a traveler comes to a village and he's hungry. And he begins to set up a fire and put a pot above the fire and starts boiling water. And he puts some stones inside of the pot. Someone smells the fire and comes up and says, hey, what are you cooking? Well, there's no food inside there. It's just stones and water. And this person says, I'm making stone soup. It still needs some carrots. It still needs some onions, but it'll be ready soon. And that person says, well, hey, I have some carrots and onions. And they throw some carrots and onions in. After long, or before long, there's 20 people standing around. One person brought a little bit of meat. Someone brought some potatoes. All of a sudden, you have soup. And that is what is required for lineage in this ecosystem. We all need to come together, and we all need to contribute what we have towards the whole. And that's what open lineage is. Uh, open lineage is an open standard for the collection of lineage metadata from pipelines as they are running. So this is a standard that is able to uh, uh, accommodate all three of those approaches that I mentioned before. Uh, it specifies the, the language to use when talking about data sets and jobs and data lineage. And it's a standard. And I believe that standards eventually gain momentum. The open lineage standard now has gained quite a bit of momentum. Um, but if you look at it as a percentage of that giant grass, all those logos, we have a long way to go. Uh, but standards are the right way to accomplish this. Uh, we, need a, we need a way we can all talk about data lineage that allows each of us to go off and build amazing things with that information. And that's, that's, that's what open lineage is all about. So looking a little bit into the future, I believe, this is again, my opinion, that data lineage will become standardized and the means for gathering lineage metadata become increasingly commoditized. So I believe that the interesting part about lineage is what you do with it, not how you collect it. How you collect it is the hard part. And I think that how you collect it should be something that we all understand how to do because we're all speaking the same language. So I think that part should be commoditized. I also think that as all of these multiple worlds collide, different tactics for gathering lineage, different data stores, different orchestration platforms, Data lineage is going to become really complicated. <laughs> we're going to be gathering a lot of metadata, and we're going to have to figure out how to deal with this multifaceted metadata. What if you have two views of the exact same transformation? You have to understand it's the same, same transformation. So I think that data lineage becomes a lot more multifaceted. I also think that data lineage is going to increasingly work alongside orchestration to automate stuff like root cause analysis and backfills. The combination of data lineage with data catalogs and data lineage with data quality systems is pretty well understood, but the combination of data lineage and orchestration systems, I think is a lot of untapped potential. So we're gonna see a lot of that in the coming years. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to me today. I hope you learned something about data lineage and I'm, uh, I'm, here, to, I'm here to answer your questions.